My t-shirt says Saturday. Why does it say Saturday? It is not Saturday. Hello there bookworms! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Annie and in today's video I will give you my mid-year reading wrap-up. So I will talk a bit about my reading statistics of 2021 so far and about the best and worst books I've read this year and also about my goals and plans for the second half of the year. So I'm really happy to say that my reading is going great so far. I've set my Goodreads goal to 65 books. I think that is a very manageable number because I like to rather set the goal a little bit lower and then read more books in the end than set it too high and struggle with reaching the goal at all because this has happened to me in the past and it was not pleasant. So yeah, my reading goal for this year is 65 books and so far I've read 39 and Goodreads tells me that I'm 11 books ahead of schedule which is such a great feeling. But now we'll get a bit into the books that I actually read and a lot of them were actually comics. And I know there's this ongoing discussion whether reading comics or graphic novels are cheating. And sometimes I even feel a bit like I'm cheating myself. But then I tell myself, no, it's not cheating. I mean, the books are on Goodreads and it's something that you read and it doesn't matter how much text or pictures the book has is still reading. But as for comics, I never count the single issues because they're only like 20 pages each. Instead, I count the full volumes. So when I checked my Goodreads and I actually read 20 comics and or graphic novels this year, so that leaves me at 19 books. So now I will talk a bit about the best and the worst books I've read so far this year. First off, I have to say that I'm not the person who gives out five stars easily. So for me, a book really has to earn five stars. It really has to be like mind-blowingly good. Like it can be an all-time favorite of mine or just something that completely positively surprised me. But on the other hand, I also don't give out one stars a lot because I feel that's just mean. I feel like every book has at least some sort of redeeming quality to it. So if I didn't like a book or if I was just really, really bored with the book, I will usually give like 1.5 or 2 stars. So now that I've told you a bit about my rating system, let me tell you about the books that I absolutely love this year. And the first one is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. This is the seventh and final book in the Throne of Glass series. And this is the German copy. I even um, started to annotate my books a bit. I know those are not many notes for a book this huge, but I've just gotten into annotating my books and I really just mark uh, pages that really left a mark with me. So yeah, this is the final book in the series. It actually got released in Germany two years ago and it's been on my shelf ever since. But I finally got around to reading this back in February and as expected, I absolutely love this. I'm a huge fan of the series. I think the books have just gotten better and better and the world has grown so much and the characters have developed so much. Everything is just so epic and amazing. And this book also made me really emotional, so it was totally worth five stars. The next one was a reread and I already talked about this book in my May wrap up and it's The Hunger Games by Susan Collins. I already told you back then in this video that this is my favorite book of all time. Actually, this is my favorite trilogy of all time. I practically know this book by heart because I've read it like five times. So this is always a five star read to me. I would give this like a billion stars if I could. Then there were a couple of books that I rated 4.5 stars. So they were still really, really good for me, but not quite five stars. And the first one was Die Mission der Marutai bei Mara Lauer, the German science fiction book that I read in May and I already talked about in my May wrap up. This was a classical space opera and I've been really in a science fiction mood lately. So this was right up my alley. The next one I rated five stars was a Marvel comic and it was The Death of Captain America by F. Brubaker. I unfortunately can't show you this because I read it in digital format as I do most comics but it was absolutely amazing. Let me tell you, I'm not the biggest Captain America fan, but I really enjoyed this volume because it was so surprising and the story was so well written and well told and also the art was just gorgeous. This was one of those books that happened to really positively surprise me, so I couldn't not rate this five stars. The next one I rated five stars is You Brought Me the Ocean by Alex Sanchi. This is a graphic novel about the coming out of a gay teenager. And this is the German copy, which was given to me by the publisher in exchange for a review and I absolutely loved this. This was another case of a book that I didn't expect to love so much because I usually don't read LGBTQ and or contemporary stuff, but this was so heartwarming and felt very real and I ended up really, really enjoying this. And the third book that I read, 4.5 stars, was another Captain America comic and it were the Winter Soldier issues by Ed Brubaker. This is pretty much the comic version of the Winter Soldier movie. So it is about Bucky Barnes, who is one of my favorite characters. And I loved everything about this story. So those were the books that I love. And now let me talk about the books that I didn't love. 
So I didn't rate a book one star this year yet, but there was a book that I rated two stars and it was the German edition of In Fury Born by David Weber. He is a very popular science fiction author and this was actually my first book by him and unfortunately it was a bit of a letdown. I expected this to be very action-packed and exciting military sci-fi, but I was bored so often because it was just so descriptive. And unfortunately, since this is the German copy, they did something really weird with the German translation. So they kind of separated the book in Fury Born into two parts. And this was just the first half, which wasn't obvious, unfortunately, by just reading the text on the back. Because the text is actually the summary of the whole original book, but this is just the first half. So I always expected it to go more into the action and to go deeper into everything, and it didn't. And then it just kind of stopped in between. I was really annoyed and disappointed with this, so I couldn't rate it more than two stars. And then there was a book that I rated 2.5 stars, and it was We See Everything by William Sutcliffe. I don't have this with me either, because I read the digital copy from my library. This is a YA fiction about two teenagers who are on two different sides of a war. One of them is a drone pilot, and one of them lives in the city that is under siege. And then one day the drone pilot's mission is to keep track of the other teenager and eventually kill his father because his father is believed to be part of some underground resistance movement. So I really liked the idea behind this but I really couldn't stand the character of the drone pilot. He was so shallow and vain and annoying. I absolutely really hated him and this also made me dislike the book unfortunately. So I gave it 2.5 stars because I really liked the idea that was really good and I also enjoyed the perspective of the other teenage boy, but I couldn't give this a higher rating because the overall execution was just not good. So those were the best and worst books of 2021 so far for me. And now I will tell you about my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year. The first one is Steel Striker by Marie Lu, which is the sequel to Sky Hunter. This is a YA dystopian slash fantasy duology. And Marie Lu is one of my favorite authors. I really enjoyed this first book. I wasn't blown away by it, but I rated it four stars. And this book has an amazing main character. Her name is Tallinn and she's mute, but she uses this to her advantage because she works as a striker for the nation of Mara. And the strikers are soldiers who are tasked with hunting down some sort of monsters that the enemy nation released near their uh, borderlines. And then one day the strikers make a prisoner and Tallinn gets tasked with training him. And I know what you think. You think, oh my god, there's a romance, the two become a couple. But it's not as simple as that. This is not very romance heavy and this is also why I like this book. And since Marie Lu is one of my favorite authors, I can't wait for the second book to come out. Its release is scheduled for September and I will be getting this book as soon as it hits the shelves. <laughs> book number two that I'm really excited for is Aurora's End by Amy Kaufman and Jake Kristoff. This is the third and final book in the Aurora trilogy, the first two books are Aurora Rising and Aurora Burning. They are YA science fiction novels. They are some sort of space opera with a bunch of misfits coming together and having to save the galaxy. So the idea isn't something completely mind-blowingly new, but the writing style is so fun and the characters have so many cool dynamics. So I can't wait for this third book to come out in November. And then finally, the third book that I'm really, really, really excited for, like beyond excited. It also comes out in November and it is Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson. This is the third book in the Skyward series, the first book being Skyward and the second Starside. And oh my god, guys, I haven't talked about these books yet, but I could talk about them like for hours. Those books are like everything to me. I read the first book in 2020 and it absolutely blew me away. It was my first book by Brandon Sanderson and I totally didn't expect to love it that much, but oh my god. This book, Skyward, it was everything to me. I love the main character, I love the premise, I love the plot, I love everything about this. I know I'm not objective when it comes to this book, but I could just rave for this for hours. So of course I'm beyond excited for the third book to finally come out, especially since the second one ended on a major cliffhanger. Like I even turned back the page to see if I missed something, but no, that was really the end. And I can't wait to get my hands on this third book because I have such high hopes for it. And I know it's not always good to have high hopes for a book, but I'm pretty sure that Brandon Sanderson will not disappoint me. And then finally, the last thing I want to talk about are two other books that I want to read this year. They came out years ago, but I finally want to get around to reading them now. And the first one is Leviathan Wakes by Mr. Corey. I have no idea. I can't remember his first name right now. And unfortunately, I haven't written it down somewhere. And I also can look it up on my phone because I'm filming with my phone. But yeah, this is the first book in the Expand series. It is an adult science fiction series. It has also been adapted as a TV show. And I am a huge fan of this show. It is a space opera and I love 
the spaceship crew in this. They're all amazing and I've been wanting to read the book for ages, basically since I started to watch the show years ago, but I never got around to reading this. But I really plan on getting this from the library and I can't wait to see if I like the book just as much as the show. And the second one I want to read before the end of 2021 is Hawkeye by Matt Fraction. This is also a Marvel comic and in case you didn't know there is a Hawkeye a show coming to Disney Plus, which is great because Hawkeye is like my favorite underrated Marvel hero. He is seriously so so underrated but I love this character so much I mean it may also have to do with the fact that he is an archer and I have a thing for archers and archery in general I would show you my bow if I had it ready right now but it's not it's somewhere in the corner but yeah I've never read one of Hawkeye's solo comics and this one has been recommended to me so many times and I can't wait to finally read it myself so this was it for my mid-year reading wrap-up. I'm really happy with how my reading is going so far this year. 2021 has been a great reading year for me. I hope it's also going great for you. Tell me down below in the comments which books you've been reading, which books you loved or didn't love and if there are any new releases that you can't wait for that come out in the second half of the year. And if you enjoyed this video then give it a thumbs up and maybe think about subscribing to my channel or to my book blog. And I hope to see you again soon in my next video. Bye!